My good friends, my dearest viewers, welcome to the Milking Inn, the place in which your favorite wizard reacts to your favorite content. My friends, today we have something exciting to react to. The official Albion Online YouTube page has posted a video five hours ago titled Albion Online Shapeshifter Weapons. My friends, it's official. They're gonna talk about the shapeshifter weapons and if you're not excited yet, I think you should see the thumbnail. Boys, it's getting real. It's getting real, real. And I think the thumbnail actually reveals something very important about this. I want you to keep in mind the thumbnail. There are some things that I noticed after I finished the stream, after reacting to this on the stream. Because yes, I am recording this after the stream is over so I can upload it to you, YouTube people, as fast as possible. First, we're going to be watching the video together and I'm going to be trying to pause as little as possible. Though I'm going to have to pause in certain moments to bring into your attention some very, very interesting details that you might have missed. Let's watch this and uh, I'm going to give my impressions and my, f my opinion at the end. Hello and welcome to another Albion Online Dev Talk. Many of you have been eagerly awaiting news about what's coming next for Albion Online. It's exciting. It's absolutely exciting. Come to start answering that question. I can tell you it's better than I thought. We will be releasing a series of Dev Talks, each one focusing on one of the features we're currently working on and how they fit into our long-term plans for Albion Online. Today, Take a good look at this man, they look badass. I want you to notice that uh, there's two weapon lines missing. There is the um, uh, eagle form missing, and there's also, if I'm not mistaken, which one? Oh, the werewolf, and the werewolf form. So two artifact forms are missing from this image. Next major weapon line. The you are what you wear system is a cornerstone of Albion Online. And one of I'm calling it right now, this is going to be the new meta. Absolutely. Introducing exciting new items. Look at the art of this. You know what I love about this? And I've said this on the stream as well. I love the fact that, that the tier 4 weapons look just as good as the tier 8 weapons. Like, uh, of course, there's different assets and different um, uh, stages of development of the form itself and of the staff itself. But I love the fact that, uh, like, usually the tier 4 artifacts look very bland. Now, of course, there are some exceptions. For example, I really don't like how this one looks like. Adding but the others actually look really, really good, both in the tier form, tier 4 form and in the tier 8 form. Such a significant I like that. I like that a ton. That it can feel like the entire game changes. I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that every single weapon is basically an animal head or an entity head on a stick. Keep that in mind. Trust me, I think we figured something huge out. Raids might be coming in Albion. And again, I just want to say this to hype you guys up a little bit. I'm not pulling this out of my rear end. I have good reasons to believe that. And I'm going to be explaining why. But let's get to the end of this first. For this reason, we want to make sure every item we release brings something new and exciting to the game. And the Shapeshifter staff... New and exciting it is. ...do that. For the first time in Albion Online, Players will be able to transform into entire. I want you to notice something. I pointed this out on the stream as well, but I want to make sure that you guys, you two people, notice this as well. You have the HP bar, you have the energy bar, and there's an extra bar. And that extra bar, look at how low it is right now, and look at how it fills up whenever you do attacks with the weapon itself. I want you to notice a little bit later on, he's going to be using his Mage Cow. Mage Cow that is not going to fill this bar up. So only weapon attacks will fill this bar up. Look at this. Boom. And you even have an animation of like a wisp going in you. But unfortunately, the feeling of the bar happens before the wisp reaches you. Uh, they should actually fix that. But yeah, all right. Check this out. This ability. The flip side. I want, you, I want you to also notice the flip side. Whenever you use abilities while you are shapeshifted, you consume not your energy, but this bar right here. They're going to be explaining what that is. And it's kind of an interesting system because initially I thought that you need this bar to be somewhat filled up so you can do abilities. But a little bit later on, he's going to be also in werewolf form and he's going to be doing abilities with an empty bar. So that means that the bar does something else. Maybe boosting your damage. I think it's going to be a very interesting system because if this boosts your damage, let's say you have a damage boost on your Q based on the amount of... Uh, how much you have this bar filled up or not and a boost on your W. Your E is going to be locked by the shape shift itself. So you're going to have to choose like which ability do I use? Which ability do I want to empower first and then second? Which ability do I empower for the second time? And so on and so forth. It's going to be a very interesting mechanic if that's the case. But yeah, 
equipped with a shapeshifter staff and entirely new I also want you to notice the cooldown. He just went off of the form and now he's back in the form. And he's also saying that you can switch back and forth. That is what he said. Which significantly affects their capabilities. In their human form, shapeshifters are masters of manipulating raw energy, which they can use to inflict damage, disrupt enemies, or support their allies. Whilst doing so, they build up shift charges. And the shift charges are those things right here. You have one, two, three, four, five. That's the maximum amount of shift charges, as you can see right there. Weapons associated shape. It's so badass. Each weapon comes with a unique shape, and each shape. By the way, that's uh, I. We laughed about this on the stream as well. So I, I feel like I owe you, YouTube people, to laugh about this with you as well. You see this? I don't know. I don't know. Kinda, kinda like the. <laughs> The WoW Druid form a little bit at the same time. And this is what I said on the stream as well. It's a bear. How are you supposed to represent it? But it does get a little bit worse. It does get a little bit worse. And each shape possesses its own set of unique abilities. I want you to look at the werewolf. I just noticed this right now, like legit. <laughs> like I legit just noticed this right now. I didn't notice this on stream. Boys. Albion is playing other games. <laughs> At the same time, again, it's a werewolf. How else are you gonna represent it? But I don't know. Like looking at, I just noticed this. Uh, it doesn't stop there. Uh, we also have this. <laughs> it's getting kind of ridiculous. A little bit. Just, just a little bit. You know, a little bit. A little bit. Oh wait, that's not it. This is it. This is it. Oh, I spoiled it a little bit for you. So, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit of inspiration. Let's call it some um, some inspiring touches. <laughs> Using By the way, I love the, the size differences. And now, boys, get ready to laugh. If you didn't laugh up until now, you're about to. <laughs> they left this one as the last one for a good reason. This is the Night Elf form. This is the Night Elf form. This is like one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> this is the Night Elf Druid form. Like, straight up. It's updated and it's made to look better. I actually wish that the WoW form would look like this. But I'm just saying... I think we can call this heavily inspired, to say the least. But hey, it's not bad. I'm not saying this to criticize. I'm making this to poke a little bit of fun. I'm a big proponent of MMOs stealing from one another as much as they can. World of Warcraft stole from Guild Wars 2 the dragon riding mechanics. Uh, they combined the Sky Scale mount and the Griffin mount. Uh, Albion Online stole Brazilian from... Um, Bastion from uh, World of Warcraft. So, of course, of course, you're gonna have things that you take from other games. Because, as I like to say, and I don't think I don't think this is my quote, I think I've heard it somewhere, but I don't remember exactly where. Creativity comes from stealing so many things that you actually start developing your own ideas. So, I'm not saying this to complain, I'm just saying this to poke some fun. Because I found it kind of funny. In this I don't like the eagle shape. The eagle shape is the only one that I don't like. Continuously switch between that. Okay, check this out. Check this out. So this guy, this is the moment that I was referring to. So he's gonna be in werewolf form, and he's gonna have just one charge. Boom. One shift charge. Initially, I thought that the shift charges, as I've said, are responsible for you being able to use your abilities. But look at this. He used an ability, consumed the charge, and then he keeps using abilities. Look, look at that, look at the Q. As each shape also comes... So that makes me think that this will actually empower. And I want you to hear what he says right here. Like, uh, instead of making the abilities available, it makes the abilities stronger, which is great. On the battlefield. Listen to this. As each shape also comes with unique health and armor stats, which replace your human stats, players can use this for switching roles during a fight. Some shapes are very resilient, while others are more deadly but fragile. This system allows for a vast array of build possibilities. Players can double down on their shape's strength by equipping matching gear for the... Let me translate this in a clearer, clearer way. Right now, if you are a tank, by default, just because you're wearing plate armor, you are gonna have less damage. The damage gets reduced, or you don't get as much of a damage boost, I guess I should say. So you're gonna do less damage, but you're gonna have more HP. Well, with this weapon, you can be a full-blown tank, all plate armor, all matro cape, all resistance potions. And the second you switch into the imp shapeshift, which is technically a glass cannon, like you deal massive amounts of damage, but you also take massive amounts of damage, you're no longer gonna be a tank. You are gonna be squishy as an imp, 
but man you're gonna deal massive amounts of damage i'm very curious to see how this is gonna shift the meta and as i've said on the chat as well whenever i was uh, streaming I want to say here on YouTube as well. Could this be the precursor of weapon swapping in Albion Online? Because think about it. Essentially, like from a mechanical point of view, that is what you're doing. You have a weapon with a Q and a W, and then you shapeshift and you technically get another weapon, which is your form itself with another Q and another W. What if this could be the precursor to that? Again, this is not what that video is, what this video is about, but I just wanted to mention it to stir up your curiosity a little bit. The human form, or they can choose to go in the opposite direction and pick opposing armor to their weapon's shape. Like this basically, this is a healing tank, which is huge. Allowing them to- Like imagine in PvE. Okay, maybe in PvP, that's not gonna be viable. But in PvE, this could actually work. And that is why I love to play Druid in World of Warcraft as a tank. Cause I went in as a tank, and right before I pull the mobs, I go into restoration form, I mean into uh, the healing form, I buff myself with heals, then as I'm tanking, I am taking my heals over time. And I'm basically healing myself. Oh, the healer is sleeping, I'm stunning the enemies, running in one way, healing myself up, running back in. That is huge. That is huge and I'm really curious to see how this is going to play out. To switch from damage dealer. Now again, I did not play WoW for a long time, I'm not sure if that's optimal, but that's how I like to play it. I play it like for a two months in battle for Azeroth, that's about it. You can look forward to the shapeshifter weapon. This is huge. This is honestly huge and I, I bet everybody's excited about this and rightfully so. And beyond that, expanding and improving the you are what you wear system is always a priority on our roadmap. In our next dev talk, we will pay attention to this all new open world activity that complements the shapeshifter weapon. So a new open world activity that complements the shapeshifter weapon. This activity will also introduce additional equipment choices and further enhance the range of options available for designing your... So an activity that complements this and that introduces new options. We already know about the weapons, so the new options cannot be referring to the weapons. What could this refer to? I love data miners. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think SBI loves data miners, but I do love them. Persons that take time off of their day to data mine are my favorite people. One of them is my friend, Baraskoch. Baraskoch did a little bit of data mining in the Albion Online code. I'm not sure exactly how he found this, but allegedly there is something new coming to the Destiny bot. I'll let you guys uh, have this on the screen. If you guys want to know this in detail, even though we don't have a lot of details, I can make a separate video about this, discussing this and trying to dig a little bit further. But on the initial glance, we know that a new, check this out, Destiny board crafting tool tracking. A new tool is coming. A new gathering tool, if you want, is, ca is coming into the game. A new profession is coming into the game. And we have a tool called tracking. A crafting tool called tracking. Like this is the, the crafting for that tool. Uh, there's a lot of information about this tool over here. And I want you to see this. There are a series... Of, these are a series of titles or names for different tracking specialists in the game. Each title has a unique something, identifier and language specific test segment to a placeholder. So this basically introduces, allegedly, again, this is the code, I've uh, input this in ChatGPT so it translates it for me because I don't know how to read this, but this allegedly adds a new tool in Albion that's meant for tracking. Now what does this have to do with the shapeshifter weapon line? What are the shapeshifter weapons? Heads on a stick. Heads on a stick. We know there's gonna be a new open world activity that's gonna complement this. My friends, here's what I think this is gonna, this is gonna be. And I'm not basing this off of uh, just an assumption. I'm basing this based on how the weapons look like. Heads on a stick. I'm basing it on their thumbnail which has a new dungeon that we've never seen before in the background. I don't know what this dungeon is, and I don't think they created this just for the thumbnail, and I don't know about you, but this seems like the wild version of the werewolf. The werewolf itself, as far as I saw at least, maybe I'm wrong, but it didn't really seem to look like this. Here's what I'm thinking, chat. I think we're gonna get at the open world activity, I think it's gonna be something very similar to the Nightfall Abbey. A dungeon, solo or group dungeon, I don't know, that is gonna have an elusive entrance, as the devs themselves have called it when it came to the Nightfall Abbey. An entrance that once you take, it disappears. An entrance that moves around the map. An entrance that will have to be tracked down. And for tracking down that entrance, you are gonna need trackers. Trackers that are gonna use special tracking tools that we've seen 
in the code itself. Again, allegedly, this part is not official information. Those tracking tools, let's say, could generate a circle around you in which you can see objectives like uh, the new dungeon, let's say. The same way the Nightfall Abbey works. Like the Nightfall Abbey has a circle around it and if you enter the circle, it becomes visible on the map. With these tracking tools, allegedly, you could have a circle around you. And if you catch the dungeon in that circle, you see it on the minimap or on the map. And with the higher tier of tracking tools, you, the circle becomes bigger and bigger and bigger because you become a more proficient tracker. Now, this dungeon could be the place in which you find the artifacts for those weapons because again, the, uh, the weapons themselves are heads on sticks. You have to go track down the beasts by using a tracker device that you're gonna have in the destiny board and kill the beast so you can impale the head on a stick. This could be a raid-like system. On top of that, this is not the only thing that data miners have revealed. Also, my buddy Butterscotch digged a little bit deeper uh, a few weeks ago or a few months ago uh, when I made a video about allegedly new potions coming in Albion Online. I'm gonna be linking this video in the description, but we have some interesting, interesting information. Those potions were designed by me, like this is not a real thing, but there are some potions that seem very interesting. There's a tracking potion, there's, oh no, a scouting potion, sorry. There's a tornado in a bottle potion. There's a lot of good things that allegedly are also coming into the game. Now, how do we tie all of this up together? So, what if we're getting, what if this new open world activity that they're referring to is referring to the dungeon that I'm talking about, an elusive dungeon similar to the Nightfall Abbey, a dungeon in which a wild beast or maybe even multiple wild beasts find their lair and we have to go there and slay those beasts so you can get the artifacts so you can craft the shapeshifter weapon line. Furthermore, in a system very similar to V-Rising. V-Rising has a system very similar to that when it comes to boss hunting and the way you track their blood trail and stuff like that. Furthermore, the new gear choices and the new options to creating your, your builds and stuff like that, what if those would refer to the upcoming potions? that trust me, they are more like abilities in a battle. Like they're so strong, they're insane. And I strongly suggest to check out this video right here that I'm gonna be linking in the description. I go into detail again with code, with a lot of information, and I try to dig as deep as I can. Tying it up together, chat? I think we might be getting raids. I think we might be getting raids. At the same time, I don't wanna say this is the absolute truth because I don't know. I was 100% certain that this weapon line will be a necromancer weapon line. I was wrong. So I might be wrong again, but based on everything that I've mentioned so far, based on this image, based on the information that we received in the past from data miners, and based on the information provided by SBI themselves, I don't think I'm wrong this time. But what do you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Mog bids you farewell from the milking in itself. I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to catch you guys in one of my live streams. I stream every single day except Sundays, starting from 10 a.m. UTC all the way to 18 a.m. UTC Maybe shorter sometimes, but you can catch me live on Twitch probably at this very moment. So come hang out and why not let's have an interesting discussion over there. We decided to finally launch Patreon after seeing so many people willing to help us out. So if you want to help us out, if you want to support our content, please consider joining our Patreons by accessing the link in the description down below. It truly helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. We love you all.